His name is John C. Hello Tigers, I am Technical Sergeant Maisha Tucker from DOA and today I am joined by our Squadron Superintendent, CMS Sergeant Jake Kearney. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So I'm going to ask you a few questions, low threat, but I do want to start with uh, asking you to tell us a little bit about your Air Force career before you became a Tiger this time around. So yes, I started off, the, the 324th was the first unit that I was assigned to. And when I came in, the security clearance process was a little bit longer, so I spent the first 13 months here on island doing various different jobs. The majority of that time was spent uh, with security forces as an augmentee. So I did a little over 10 months of augmentee duty before I actually got cleared. I went into PACAF for a few months and then finally uh, up to the tunnel. Um, I spent about five years here before being deployed. I went to Iraq in 2008. And when, as soon as I came back after a total of six years here in Hawaii, I went to Harper Field, Florida. I was there for three years working at the 25th Intelligence Squadron where our mission was to support the C-130s that were supporting AFSOC. Then from Harbor Field I went right across the street over to Pensacola to go to JCAC. So I did JCAC for six months without PCSing so that was, that was fun driving <laughs> uh, from Harbor Field all the way to Pensacola every day. But uh, after JCAC my follow-on was Nellis. So I was at the 57th Information Aggressor Squadron they have a really cool mission, the aggressors in general. <coughs> so we cut there, going back. So I was at the 57th Information Aggressor Squadron at Nellis. And from there, as soon as an opportunity opened up to go come back to Hawaii, I took it. So when I originally came back in 2015, I was a part of the 37th Intelligence Squadron because I was 104 Alpha and it was uh, supporting a cyber mission. And then last year, I had the opportunity to come back over to the 324th for a PCA, and that's what I chose to do. So. I am back here, and uh, <coughs> so now I'm back in the 324th. So uh, about a year ago, I PCA from the 37th, and I've been up until recently. I was the SEL for PMG, and then I just got picked up to be the superintendent because Chief Yorkham went up to the group. Awesome! Well, congratulations on your appointment as the superintendent. So, can you tell me a little bit about your leadership style and your philosophy when it comes to leadership? Yeah, so my personal leadership style is one I think I'm very direct. Um, obviously the Air Force teaches us transformational leadership all throughout PME, and I think trans transformational leadership is awesome if you can pull it all off, but it's very difficult to do everything that uh, it encompasses. Uh, for example, for me, I know I'm not very charismatic, so I have to find ways to kind of overcompensate or compensate for you know that lack of that ability. So for me, I combine uh, servant leadership traits along with transformational leadership, and I found that that has helped me provide opportunities and help people to get better or grow in ways that transformational leadership by itself would not allow me to do personally. So I kind of mix the two and take what I'm good at and, and blend it together um, for the best out possible for me. As okay. far as, far as uh, my philosophy, so my leadership philosophy is, uh, is a blend of um, many different ones just because I try to pick and choose from leaders that I aspire to be like or that I respect. So one, one example is uh, David Marquette is a retired Navy captain and he wrote a book and he wrote a book called Turn the Ship Around. Um, and in that book he describes that he was put into a scenario where he knew nothing about the submarine that he was put on and people were asking him questions and he really didn't have a good answer to them. And what he did to change the dynamic was any subordinate who came to him with anything, they had to start their sentence with, I intend, right? I intend to do one thing or another. And what that did, it took the responsibility and the onus off of the leader to know everything, and it really let the subordinates think through the problems and identify you know, the best course of action. And in that, he can help guide them to make the best decisions or give them more perspective if needed. So. To me, taking ownership for what we do in our sphere of influence, um, the things that we're responsible for, that is something uh, that I try to get across as much as possible. I think there's a lot of leadership decisions and just decisions in general that we can make at our own level, but we kind of push that responsibility off to someone else. And we ask someone else to make that decision for us, especially the hard decisions. 
So for me, I want to see people make those decisions, right? And I want to see them take ownership of those processes, of those uh, decisions, and it'll help them grow. So here's a question that um, I personally have a lot of stock in. Uh, what does the squadron superintendent do? Like we know that they exist and that they're in the CSS, but I think it's a very elusive position, especially to first term airmen who just know that like, oh, that's the chief that's just gonna tell me what flight I go to. And obviously your job is much bigger than that. So what exactly does a squadron superintendent do? Right, so I mean, as an airman and even as a young NCO, I, I didn't know. It was just the elusive person who kind of came around during commander's call and they, they had some great words of motivation from time to time and they disappeared. Um, so in the black and white, and AFI 1-2 explains uh, the commander's responsibilities. So they have MGAs, which are your major graded areas, and there are four things. So you have one is leading the people, two is executing the mission, three is managing resources, and then finally four is going to be uh, improving the unit. So my job as a superintendent is to support the commander in doing all four of those things. And to be able to support him with his vision, as well as his intent, commander's intent. Now, that might be formal or informal, but my job is to relay that down to the workforce. So, for the first one, leading the people, the big piece there is communication. So I need to communicate commander's intent, I need to communicate uh, across the squadron to get everybody on the same page so they were all working together. For another big one is gonna be improving the unit, as we all, been taught at one point in our lives is to leave something better than the way you found it and uh, I take that to heart so wherever I go you know I do my best to um, inherit what has been given to me and just try to make it a little bit better uh, moving forward and then executing the mission so I'm not technical anymore that's not my role however the way I support that function is to give the people what they need to be able to execute the mission, whether that's resources, whether that's shielding them from taskers, or just giving them the time and space to be able to do their mission, what they need to do. Okay. And then the last one, managing resources, that's the, the manning, manpower piece of it, and uh, like you said, placing people on the flights, that's, that's a major part of being a superintendent as well. Okay, awesome. So what is the most difficult part of being a superintendent, and how can we as Tigers make that easier on you? Because you're only one person. Yes, yes, and um, the most difficult part is going to be the communication for sure. So we communicate on several different platforms, uh, on different classification levels, across different buildings. So getting a single message out to everyone seems near impossible. And uh, I think everyone, in, not everyone, many people are on different schedules, you know, especially with COVID right now. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of variance in people's day-to-day -day routines and nothing seems to be quote unquote normal anymore. So communicating to everybody it is very difficult. So what I could use help with is helping to relay that information. My old supervisor once told me, one, don't be the lowest ranking person in the room with a secret, and I take that to heart. Right? If you, if you know something um, good or bad that is happening or something is important, uh, please relay that up and then as the information trickles down, please over communicate. I'd rather have three emails on the same thing than no emails on that one thing and uh, not be able to get it done. So uh, over communication for me, I'm very transparent and I will let you, anyone know if you wanna come talk about any decision that's made, why decisions were made. And that's part of my communication is be able to express that as I'm giving instructions or as I'm asking for things is to, um, be able to communicate that accurately. So be good communicators no matter what level you're at. That's what you need from us. Yes, please. Awesome. Okay, my last question, um, and I'm really looking forward to your perspective because you've been here more than once. What does being a Tiger mean for you? So there's definitely a lot of pride in our squadron. And for those who have not been here multiple times, maybe they don't feel it. Uh, for me as an airman, it was very clear who Tigers were and who the other Intel units were. Uh, we walked around, you know, our head held a little higher. Any type of sports day, things around the base, we always showed up and we placed very well for squadron sports. Um, our intramurals, softball, basketball, volleyball, you name it. Uh, Tigers did very well across all competitions across the base. And we were well known for that. 
So even now, I feel the same way. Obviously, we haven't had any sports because of COVID lately, but still, walk around the work center, you can tell who the Tigers are, and you can tell by one where they're working, how they carry themselves. So to me, the squadron, there's definitely uh, a lot of pride um, with our unit. Awesome. So <coughs> those are all the questions I have for you. I do want to thank you again for your time. But before we sign off, do you have any parting words for our Tigers? Yes. So um, is this my turn? So this is what I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 All right, um, any parting words? It would be, uh, one, I'm super grateful and appreciative to be in this position. As a young airman, I never would have thought that I would, one, be to the rank of senior master sergeant, two, be the superintendent of this squadron. Uh, I always held the superintendent or the chiefs that I've had uh, at other units in such high regard and I've always had such high expectations of them. So I only hope that I can fill those same expectations that I held for others, uh, for myself. So one, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Uh, I'm proud to serve with the 324th again, and especially in this position. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Of course, thank you for being here. Congratulations again. Uh, well, Tigers, we've got to know a little bit more about our superintendent. Um, you know, he's here, come say hi. Um, that's it. Bye.